what happens with these groups when they go out to evangelize. What they are doing on the Christian campuses and what they are doing, I'm not kidding, is loving people. Here's my list for your consideration. Want a hug? You say, what's that all about? A young lady informed me that out on the university campuses where the NAR kids go, they walk up to students and say, want a hug? And they, they, they just, they, they give them an embrace and the kids like it. And they discover that these, that these kids that are in this, this aberrant movement, hey, they love Jesus and they hug me and they receive some touch because human beings do need tactile sensations. We're made to be relational. Maybe they're not getting them elsewhere. And when somebody comes along and says, let me just give you a big hug, they find it attractive. Why? Consideration number two. It's a little old something called love bombing. Cults love bomb. What is it? It's just loving, loving, loving people, being kind, being nice, being affectionate, because they're not getting it elsewhere, and so they want to get it somewhere, and when these people come along, they love bomb them. Uh, perhaps you think I'm making that up. Well, let me just share with you a clip from a movie from 1981. This is a movie about a young man who found himself getting drawn into, do you remember the Moonies? How did they drag him in? Love bombing. We're gonna kill them so they know how much we love them. We're gonna bomb them into the ground. What are we gonna do? Bomb with love. 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 And David in the movie. Uh, he received the bombs, and he loved the love, and, and he found himself in a cult. Maybe that is why so many of our kids are being drawn in to this movement. Consideration number three. We, on the other hand, are the frozen chosen. Come on, we make jokes about it. We don't even tell this joke about others. We tell it about ourselves. Hey, when people get to heaven, there's going to be a wall, and on the other side... It's going to be us because we think we're the only ones there. Okay, we, we, we think that we joke about that, but maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe that phrase exists not simply because it rhymes, but because we are and we ought not to be. At least that's what the Bible says. From 1 Corinthians 1.8, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. I grant you this verse is being taken a little bit out of context, but the principle still applies. This is a truism. Knowledge puffs up. That's you and me, conservative Christian. We, we like knowledge, and it puffs up. And contrarily, love edifies. We shouldn't be the frozen chosen. We should have intellectual knowledge, but it should affect our heart and our emotions and how we treat one another and maybe love the kids. Another consideration, number four, the more liberal, the more nice. I could be wrong about this, but this is my observation. I've met plenty of Christians, and the more liberal they are, the nicer they seem to be. My absurd, I didn't call George Barna when I go to a conservative church, of which I'm a part. We just tend to be less affectionate, less warm, less welcoming. As a rule, that's my observation, and that too ought not to be. That's what the Bible says. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. You and I, with our head full of knowledge, should be the most loving people there are. But I'm wondering, is this happening? Because so many of our kids are feeling unloved with us, but feeling loved by an aberrant movement. Could this be instructive for us? Another consideration for your consideration. There are two ditches. Happy church versus chilly church. Maybe... We're more the chilly church. We don't want to hear this and go, you know what, I think that that guy with the vest is onto something, although I'm not sure the purple tie matches the purple shirt. 
then let's become, <laughs> hey, church, welcome everybody. We don't want to fall into that ditch either, do we? Consideration number six, do our youth groups feed into this? We have to ask ourselves the question, if the kids go off to the universities, the folks from the aberrant movement start loving on them, they do the repetitious music business, it feels kind of comfortable. I get that because that's what I came out of, so maybe, just maybe, our youth groups, if they are not heavy on theology, teaching, but they're more bent toward fun, when they find kind of the fun movement, they're attracted to it.